Black Girls Podcast, a weekly conversation about mental health, personal development, and all the small decisions we can make to become the best possible versions of ourselves. I'm your host, Dr. Joy Harden Bradford, a licensed psychologist in Atlanta, Georgia. For more information or to find a therapist in your area, visit our website at therapyforblackgirls.com. While I hope you love listening to and learning from the podcast, it is not meant to be a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for joining me for session 242 of the Therapy for Black Girls podcast. We'll get right into the episode after a word from our sponsors. Shingles? Oh, boy. My wife did not have a good time. You mean that rash she had? Yeah. She said she'll never forget the pain, the burning, the rash lasted for weeks, and there's nothing you can do to prevent it. Well, actually, there's a vaccine that can prevent shingles. What? What? Yeah, shingles can be prevented. Shingles Shingles can can be be what? what? Prevent it. 50 years or older, talk to your pharmacist today about shingles vaccination. This advertisement is brought to you by GSK. It's the new year, which means it's time to leave the I have nothing to wear rut back in 2021. Luckily, Macy's makes rediscovering your style effortless with their free personal stylist who can help you find your look and feel best dressed for any occasion. Macy's personal stylists are the experts you should have in your corner. Visit Macy's.com slash personal stylist to book an appointment today. Again, that's Macy's.com slash personal stylist. An important part of gathering with friends and family these days is making sure everyone's been tested. These days, it's easier than you think. Pick up a quick view at home over-the-counter COVID-19 test for your local retailer. In just minutes, you can get results in the privacy of your home. Take 10 minutes, take charge. Visit quickviewathome.com for FDA emergency use authorization only. Even if your current wardrobe consists of nothing but sweats and t-shirts, There may be certain virtual experiences or socially distant activities that require you to be just a little more polished. Joining us today to help us get our closets and our personal style together is Germany G. Germany is a 10-year veteran in the fashion and retail industry. As a breakout stylist, Germany's styling niche has led her to work with some of California's most prominent influencers, professionals, and executives like Bozema St. John, Robin and Andrea McBride, Valicia Butterfield-Jones, and many more. Germany dedicates her styling prowess to making her clients look and feel their best selves, exude confidence, and elevate their personal brands. Germany and I chatted about how to define style, some staples to help build the foundation of a wardrobe, how to choose styles for your body type, and her thoughts on the pieces to splurge on and the ones to save on. If there's something that resonates with you while enjoying our conversation, please share it with us on social media using the hashtag TBG in session. Here's our conversation. So I would love it if you could start by telling us what you do as a personal stylist and how you got into this. Yeah. So what I do as a personal stylist is really take the time to develop my client's personality, everything they are, the things that make them them, and also the words that represent them and bring that to life through what they wear. And that's what I do as a personal stylist. And I help them feel and look their best selves and really command the rooms through their style. And so I would say personal style is really truly helping your client to really understand who they are and bringing out the best version of themselves through what they're wearing. And so how would we find a personal stylist? I know a lot of people probably use something like Instagram, but like, how do we know that people are actually legit? Like, what (laughs) kinds of questions would you ask, right? Because I'm guessing there's no, no, like, licensure, right? Like, anybody could call themselves a stylist. Oh, my God. No, there isn't. And, like, Instagram is probably one of the best tools to really find someone who you like and you feel like resonates with your style. Mm -hmm. But... I would also say like you should be cautioned 
when you are seeing personal stylists because some people brand themselves as personal stylists and then after you work with them or after you have their chat with them, they can't really translate who you are through what you're wearing. Some people can only like copy paste like their style or copy paste a certain style. I think when you're trying to find a stylist, like ask all the tough questions. How long have you been in the business? What's your styling approach? What questions are you going to ask me? Like, are you asking about my lifestyle? Are you asking about my body type? Have you styled certain body types? And have you styled all body types? Are you comfortable with that? And so I think it's a dating process in general, because like you said, there is no licensure, but it's just really having the good and tough questions when it comes to, okay, what is it that you want to get out of this? Do you want to build a long lasting relationship with the stylist? Or do you just want to be styled for it's your 50th birthday or it's your 30th birthday and you just want to be cute? And so I think it's about what is it that you're actually trying to get as a result of being styled? And then are they a personal stylist who can actually get me? Oh, that's a great point. Yeah. So, you know, something in Germany, I think that may be helpful for people to clear up. When you are styling people, who is buying the clothes when you are styling somebody? (laughs) Okay. So when I'm styling somebody personally, the client is buying the clothes. I pretty much work with all of my clients within their budget need. So uh, if you say your budget's a thousand dollars and we are contracted for four looks, we're going to get you four amazing looks for the thousand dollars, but they're going to be quality. They're going to be versatile. They're going to be able to ebb and flow with you throughout your life. Got it. That's helpful information to know. Can you tell me about the difference between fashion and style? Yes. The difference between fashion and style is that fashion runs on like trend cycles. So whatever is the hottest, the cold, this thing right now is fashion and we can adopt from fashion and bring that into our style but style is developed over time style really helps you understand who you are as an individual what really attracts you what looks best on you what helps you feel your most confident self and fashion is you know like I said what is the hottest thing right now and so I remember when the fanny pack came back and I was like I'm not wearing fanny pack but then they (laughs) but then they like started to make different iterations of the fanny pack and you find one that you know feels best reflective of who you are and I'm like okay this leather fanny pack I can adopt that and like bring that into my personal style but I'm not going to spend a thousand dollars on a Gucci fanny pack that looks like something I saw in the 90s that was a hundred dollars And so Mm -hmm. when you think about fashion and style, that also kind of helps you understand what you should splurge or just not splurge on. And so that kind of depends on you. And so like if you're really into sneakers and Balenciaga sneakers are, you know, a thing right now, I would say if you know that you're going to wear that all the time, spend your money on it. That's a part of your style. If the Balenciaga sneakers are not or sneakers aren't really in your style identity, I would say pass on that trend or I'm never really into like dupes, but if you can find a dupe Mm, that you're mm -hmm. not going to be able to spend like thousands of dollars on, I would rather you do that versus spend all this money and then you not ever wear the product. So you mentioned our style identity, and I think that that would be helpful for people to just hear more about. So what kinds of questions can we ask ourselves to even figure out what our personal style is? Yeah. So when you're talking about styles, kind of like dating yourself, like what are you attracted to? What colors do you like that make you feel confident? What silhouettes make you feel confident? I have a class where I actually take the time to help women really like understand and hone in on, you know, really what they like. And so I give them about a week to like screenshot, do some magazine grabs, et cetera, et cetera, go on Pinterest. And then just, you know, pin all those things and put them in a file. And then we go through that file and we look at the high level theme. So if I'm seeing like a lot of leather, I'm like, okay, so you're really attracted to leather. Do you like leather jackets? Do you like leather pants? Like how can we infuse this into your wardrobe and style? And then the same with prints, patterns, textures, silhouettes, et cetera, et cetera. It's really about doing the work. And a lot of people don't want to do the work. And so you get so frustrated with style and you want to go with ease because you're like, okay, I know my leggings and my my sweatshirt is going to be 
good and it's easy. I know I look good in it and I'm going to keep going. But you really have to do the work to really understand your personal style to create that identity that you're trying to achieve and really feel and show up as your most confident self. Yeah, you bring up a really good point because I think many of us have yeah. been in like what I call just soft clothes for like the past two years, Listen. right? Like leggings and sweatshirts and t-shirts, right? Because we're mostly at home, I think, for a lot of people. Correct. But if we are starting to kind of go back into the world or we need to go back, right, because the offices are opening or whatever, how do we even start building a wardrobe? Like what are some of the basics? Yeah, so some of the basics, I always caution by saying basics have to do with where you are, your lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera. So a person in New York's basics are probably going to be a little bit different from a person in LA. But what is probably the most universal for all people, all areas throughout the country and abroad, I like an oversized button up, but you can also do a tailored button up and that can be white or striped or silk or cotton, you know, whatever feels most authentic to you. I would say a nice pair of skinny jeans. I know that this has been like a thing because, you know, Gen Zers are like skinny jeans are dead. Skinny jeans will never be dead, but I am down for a mom jean for sure. But you definitely always need a good pair of jeans. Like uh, I would say a nice pair of medium wash and a nice pair of black jeans. And then also a leather pair of pants. And then do you need a leather jacket or a denim jacket? Like these are the building blocks to your wardrobe. And then I would also say a great t-shirt, a great camisole. Those are like really good building blocks to start. And then you kind of build from there. And so you have given us some great basics. Now, what are some of the things you feel like people often overlook but really need to pay attention to when building their wardrobe? Ooh, that's good. Okay, so what people usually overlook and what I've always found as a commonality through working with clients is people either lean too far into statement pieces or too much into basics. You need to have a healthy medium in between. And so when I say statement, it's like those true wow pieces. And then you have those wow pieces and then you don't know how to pair it back to anything because you don't have the basics. And then vice versa, people who have tons of basics feel boring because they don't have any wow pieces, right? And so Mm -hmm. you have to have a happy medium in between of, okay, what can I have to like edge up like my regular sweater? Like, does it have cutouts? Does it have texture, et cetera, et cetera? Or even with pants, once you find a fit that works for you, it don't have to be the same color. Like, let's try a different texture. Let's try a different pattern. Let's try, you know, like something with some zippers on it. So, you know, have fun with it. Like, even if you find a fit that works for you, don't do the copy method and we're just going to buy eight of the same color pants because we know that fits like let's have fun with our wardrobe and then also infuse like some actual statement pieces into the wardrobe so that you can have a healthy mix and balance so that you can build and you don't become bored with your wardrobe Mm -hmm. you know I know one of the parts that I think sometimes is frustrating Mm -hmm. is you know of course all of our bodies are different right we have different body sizes body shapes and it often feels like you can only find like certain sizes like in a store Mm -hmm. or you know and so can you say a little bit about what it means for us to dress for our bodies and what should we know about our bodies to like know what kinds of pieces that might fit for us for sure literally the biggest thing and the biggest unlock you're ever going to have to learn is like proportion so everybody is shaped differently and there's a chart online and I think it has five different body types for women and while that is probably the best place to go and just to see relatively what your body type is like. Everybody's body is very different. And so the thing is that you have to do proportion play. And so what that is, is that you have to create the facade of an hourglass, if you will. And so say you have like a broader shoulder or a bigger chest. So you would then proportion play by wearing a like A-line dress or skirt, because then it's going to balance your top half with the bottom half. Vice versa, pretty much like me, I am a pear body type. So I have no boobs at all. And then like, 
all hips and thighs. And so Mm -hmm. because I'm more shapely on the bottom, I have to create an illusion on the top. So I wear like ruffles on the top or wear like a, like a one shoulder top just to like add the balance to that. So it's really all about proportions, all about balance. And so never shame yourself for your body type. Just create that illusion. I always say that um, styling is like smoke and mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. And how do we figure out or reckon our like personal style with like corporate environments, oh, right? God. So, you know, a lot of like workspaces will have like not necessarily a uniform, but like yeah. there are like guidelines around like what kinds of things are okay and what kinds of things are not. So how can we still have like our own personal style within a corporate environment? Yeah. So one, I used to work in corporate America and I would always buck the trend. And so even though Gap was still very much so a fashion company, like we very much so operated like a tech company. Everyone was really in jeans and t-shirts. It kind of appalled me. However, we were in San Francisco. But what I will say is that just buck the trend. You know, if you work in tech and t-shirts and jeans is what is most accepted in your corporate environment, edge it up a bit. Like get a nice blouse and some jeans. Like you don't have to wear heels by any means, but you know, like do something that feels authentic to you that's going to help you feel and show up as your best self. Also, you can play with the accessories. You can wear a nice necklace or layer on some necklaces, some statement jewelry. If it's accepted in your corporate environment, I'm a strong proponent of showing and being your most authentic self. So wear a head wrap, you can wear rings. And so, you know, I feel like you can always up level any corporate wear through accessories, do something that's authentic to you, but also, I guess, accepted into your environment. But, you know, buck the trend a little bit as long as it's accepted. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. Yeah. More from my conversation with Germany after the break. This segment is sponsored by Novo Nordisk. It's easy to get down on ourselves about our weight. That's because we tend to see weight regain or lack of weight loss as a personal failing. But it's important to take a step back and look at what is happening culturally around us. For instance, the pandemic. For the past year and some change, there have been so many new things to navigate. The kids have been home doing virtual school. Your dining room has become your office. And the things that you used to turn to for relaxation, like massages and working out at the gym, have largely been taken away. With so many changes and the anxiety of the pandemic, it's really easy to do things like snack because you're bored or stressed, chips are my go-to, or opt to watch your favorite show instead of going out for a walk. I'm sure you can relate to that. But the bottom line is, a lot of us struggle with taking care of ourselves because there was so much happening. And naturally, it led to weight gain and weight regain. Struggles related to a lack of access to healthy food make it more challenging to lose weight and maintain weight loss. When it's easier to get processed foods than fruits and vegetables, of course this will impact how you eat and ultimately your weight. But there's also a science behind weight loss and weight regain. When we lose weight, changes in our body's appetite hormones can make us feel hungrier. This causes us to eat more and regain the weight we lost. And it also makes weight management that much more difficult. So it's easy to feel stuck in a cycle of weight loss and regain. In fact, people living with excess weight generally make seven serious attempts to lose weight over time. Seven. And while diet and exercise are our familiar go-tos and are important, they aren't the only parts of your weight loss plan. Weight management is much more complex than what we eat and how we move. It's physiology too, probably more than anything else. That's why it's important to partner with a healthcare provider to create a weight management plan that works for you. It should be someone you trust and someone you feel comfortable talking with because you shouldn't ever feel embarrassed about excess weight or let anyone else make you feel less than. Once you find a healthcare provider you feel comfortable with, you can work together to develop a weight management plan that is right for you. This segment is sponsored by Novo Nordisk. It's easy to get down on ourselves about our weight. That's because we tend to see weight regain or lack of weight loss as a personal failing. But it's important to take a step back and look at what is happening culturally around us. For instance, the pandemic. For the past year and some change, there have been so many new things to navigate. The kids have been home doing virtual school. Your dining room has become your office. And the things that you used to turn to for relaxation, like massages and working out at the gym, have largely been taken away. With so many changes and the anxiety of the pandemic, 
It's really easy to do things like snack because you're bored or stressed. Chips are my go-to. Or opt to watch your favorite show instead of going out for a walk. I'm sure you can relate to that. But the bottom line is, a lot of us struggled with taking care of ourselves because there was so much happening. And naturally, it led to weight gain and weight regain. Struggles related to a lack of access to healthy food make it more challenging to lose weight and maintain weight loss. When it's easier to get processed foods than fruits and vegetables, of course this will impact how you eat and ultimately your weight. But there's also a science behind weight loss and weight regain. When we lose weight, changes in our body's appetite hormones can make us feel hungrier. This causes us to eat more and regain the weight we lost. And it also makes weight management that much more difficult. So it's easy to feel stuck in a cycle of weight loss and regain. A great resource to learn more about this is truthaboutweight.com. In fact, people living with excess weight generally make seven serious attempts to lose weight over time. Seven. And while diet and exercise are our familiar go-tos and are important, they don't have to be and aren't the only parts of your weight loss plan. Weight management is much more complex than what we eat and how we move. It's physiology too. Probably more that than anything else. That's why it's important to partner with a healthcare provider to create a weight management plan that works for you. It should be someone you trust and someone you feel comfortable talking with. Because you shouldn't ever feel embarrassed about excess weight or let anyone else make you feel less than. To learn more about how to have that conversation with a doctor or nurse, visit truthaboutweight.com. That's truthaboutweight.com. Once you find a healthcare provider you feel comfortable with, you can work together to develop a weight management plan that is right for you. Shingles? Oh boy, my wife did not have a good time. You mean that rash she had? Yeah. She said she'll never forget the pain, the burning, the rash lasted for weeks, and there's nothing you can do to prevent it. Well, actually, there's a vaccine that can prevent shingles. What? what? Yeah, shingles can be prevented. Shingles, shingles can, can be, be what? what? Prevent it. 50 years or older? Talk to your pharmacist today about shingles vaccination. This advertisement is brought to you by GSK. The journey of kind of like figuring out your personal style and what that looks like can be a frustrating one. Mm -hmm. What kinds of advice do you give to people who might get frustrated or feel like they need to rush this process? Take a breather. It's not going to happen overnight. Your style changes and develops over time. And who you are today will not be who you are in the next five years. You're going to keep building on that style and you're not going to find your style overnight. Like while you may then do an exercise and unlock your personal style. That's just your building blocks. That's where you're starting. And while you are growing and building and learning yourself because you're like dating yourself to really understand your style, you're going to continue to find new things that attract you you're going to continue to build. And so I would say be patient with yourself, continue to wear the things that make you feel confident, but then know that like, you're going to just keep getting better with time. The style that I have today, Lord, I look at pictures from five years ago and I'm like, who was that? Why was I wearing that? (laughs) But at that point in time, I thought I looked great. And so be gentle with yourself because it's going to be a process. And literally it's just like wine. You get better, you get finer with time. I love it. I love it. You mentioned like the pivot that sometimes happens with our style that, you know, sometimes we're kind of re-envisioning ourselves. And I think a lot of people Mm -hmm. may find themselves there now, you know, kind of in the pandemic or maybe their body has changed. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we're now trying to figure out, okay, well, what is my style now? So what kinds of tips can you give to navigate that? Yes. And I feel like I'm struggling with this myself. I was literally having a conversation with my mom saying, I have my pre-pandemic self, my pandemic self, and then my post-pandemic self, although we're still in the pandemic, but you know, <laughs> right. my, my post-pandemic self. And I had this vision of my style pre-pandemic. And then during like in the thick of pandemic, of course, I was in jeans and t-shirts and I mean, not even jeans and t-shirts. I was in sweatpants all day and lounge clothes all day. And now I have to to be out for work and I'm like who I was two years ago is not who I am today and I'm not trying to spend all this money on clothes so what do I do I think to answer that question yes I'm, I'm frustrated myself 
And I'm learning who that new version of Germany is and my style and who I want to show up as and how I want to be perceived. And so I would say, you know, start with like what you're loving right now. And so I will even use myself. I love everything oversized right now. My mom hates it. I love it. And so what in my closet do I currently have that's oversized? What am I not feeling? And like, if I'm not feeling it, if I can't like mix and match it with anything that I have in my current wardrobe, I've literally started to goodwill it all because it's not going to do any good in my wardrobe, even if I can't make one to three outfits with it. I always go with the rule of three. If I can't make three outfits with it, it got to go. And so I think you really have to talk to yourself and say, okay, what is it that I'm attracted to right now in my wardrobe that I'm willing to like keep and use in my style identity? And then are there things in my wardrobe that aren't necessarily really a part of my style identity? Say skinny jeans, right? But can I wear an oversized top with the skinny jeans? Absolutely. So I'm going to keep those. And then anything that I don't identify with, it's got to go. So then I start to make a list of, okay, what are the things I need? Like right now I'm very in need of sneakers because I'm always like constantly on the go. In my old life, I could wear heels a lot because, you know, I wasn't always on the go. I wasn't always on set, but this year has kept me on set because I'm in a lot of productions. I'm with my clients all the time. So I'm using my heels less and needing sneakers more and I want dope sneakers. And so now I have a list of, okay, I want dope sneakers. I want more oversized silhouettes, et cetera, et cetera. So I think you should start doing that to yourself. What is it that I can wear in my closet now? What can actually go with my new style identity that I can mix and match? What can I get rid of? And then what can I make a list of the things that I need? And how can I check that stuff off my list? It doesn't have to be overnight, but like, how can I start to do that over time? So this sounds like a great exercise to do even like when you're not revamping your style, Correct. Right? like just like an audit of what do I have? What do I still love? Like Listen. is there a particular cadence we might want to do this for ourselves? Yeah, I say like do it every six months. I usually do it mm. with this seasons. And so uh-huh. after summer, when I'm about to go to the storage unit, I'll say, OK, what is it that I actually wore this summer? And I would say like 2020 doesn't really count. Right. Because we were in the house. And so right. if you were looking. I would say, okay, what is it that I wore this summer that I actually loved? Okay, am I going to continue to love that next year? Okay, I think so. I'm going to keep that. What didn't I wear this summer? And why didn't I wear it this summer? And is it because I just didn't have anywhere to go? Okay. Or did it just not fit with me and who my style is? And so then I just like nix those things who don't reflect who I am. And then I do it for the next season. And so I always say, if I haven't thought about it, if I haven't looked at it, let it go. If you're not quite ready to let it go, I always say, put it in a pile or like in the back of your closet. Once that season rolls in, if you have not thought about it, let it go because you're not going to think about it. Mm. That's a great exercise. Great tips to include there. Yeah. And always get a third party. Sometimes, you know, we're so attached to our clothes because we are wearing things and they go with our lives. And so it's like, oh, my God, I wore this sweater to my sister's graduation. You don't need it 10 years from now if you're never going to wear it again. Like some things are sentimental. Like, are you going to keep it for sentimental value? You have to ask that to yourself. So would you say that a good tailor can be a cheat code to really (laughs) like taking your wardrobe to the next level? Can you say a little bit about like what kinds of things a tailor can do and why we might want to use a tailor? Yeah. Oh my God. I love all of my tailors that I work with, but a tailor can really truly make something yours. And so a tailor can take in a garment. And so it can really like make you have like, like snatched and it, it looks like it was made for you a they can also like take up the hems. I'm 5'3", so any pair of wide leg pants, and I love wide leg pants that I get, I always have to take it to my little tailor in LA. He's amazing, and he has to take them up. But also like a tailor can really like alter and transform a look. So if there's a maxi dress that I want to make a midi dress, my boy just <laughs> snatches that fabric right on out, and they can really like alter a garment and make it yours. And so, you know, for those who are creative, add stuff to your garments. You add patches, add different fabrics to a garment to make it really yours. Or you can just, if you're on the safer side, just get it tailored to you so it looks like perfection. And anything you get tailored instantly looks more expensive because it looks like it was made for you. Mm, yeah so I love that you gave options for those who are more creative and people like me who are like (laughs) I have no idea what to tell them to do except take it up a few inches (laughs) right you gotta there's a spectrum here (laughs) right 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 
<laughs> so you've already mentioned, you know, and even throughout this conversation, you've talked about the importance of having fun with this, right? Yeah. Like your, your clothing and your wardrobes to be fun. And so I want to do a little exercise with you to help our audience to kind of think about like how they might be able to engage some playfulness into their own wardrobes. Let's do so it. I want to give you a couple of fictional black women characters. And I would love for you to tell me what accessory you suggest for them if they were one of your clients. Let's do it. Okay. So the first one is Dion D. Davenport from Clueless. Ooh, of course she was known for the bucket hat. So I can't say right. bucket hat. So I would say a mini bag. You know, mini bags are really in right now. I think that would totally be a natural adoption into her style. And so I think for her preppy aesthetic, like a cute mini bag would probably be like her jam. I could totally see that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What about Denise Nisi Jackson from mm, Moby Show? Denise Nisi Jackson. I think that she could probably get away with the fanny pack wearing it around her chest. I think that mm. would be like super dope for her because she had like great street style. Like I remember her for her street style. So anything like street style related would probably be like her thing. But I would probably say the fanny pack that you could wear across your shoulders. Okay. Yeah. And then one more. What about Maya? Oh, hell yes. Wilkes from Girlfriends. Oh, hell yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. She was cute in whatever she wore, but I don't think she had like a style aesthetic. So I'd probably do some like statement necklaces and layer on some necklaces for her. I think that would be really dope. And then even like some cute waist belts would probably be nice for her too. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So who are some of the Black women that you would induct into a fashion hall of fame? Oh, I feel like some of them are already in there. Like Tracy Ellis Ross. Like, that's my yes. girl. Kalana Barfield. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. Rihanna. She's amazing. Gosh, I feel like my list can go on and on and on. But I would say, like, those women are probably, like, style icons, and I would definitely induct them into a Hall of Fame. Yeah, you started with one of my favorites, Tracy Ellis Ross. And I feel like you look at what she shares, and it's like, okay, well, clearly Tracy has a team, right? Like, right. how could you even start to go after something like Tracy's style as a regular woman? Yeah, Tracy does a lot of, like, proportion play and just playing with different textures and fabrications. And so I would say, oh, my gosh, she just does everything right. Like, she does, like, wide leg pants. So I would say that was something that you could adopt into your wardrobe. She does a lot with accessories, especially like jewelry. So I would mm -hmm. say if you're not ready to, you know, do a whole fashion rehaul to adopt Tracy's style, like, she layers a lot of necklaces these days. Also, her ring game is, like, tight and strong. And then she just knows how to accessorize. And so I would say, like, look at some pictures of Tracy, really, and say, like, what about her accessories or what about her style do I like? And then what can I adopt that feels in my price range? And so if you see, like, wild leg pants and if you see that they were made from a designer and you're not trying to spend designer money, who can I go to? Can I go to Zara? You know, Zara is for the girls. Zara. <laughs> <laughs> Zara is going to be able to, like, give me those same pants probably for a fraction of the cost. Or can I go to 11 Honoré if you're a curvy girl? Can I go to ASOS? Like, where can I go to adopt these styles and then take what I want from Tracy and then adopt it into my own wardrobe? Love it. More from my conversation with Germany after the break. What health goals have you set for yourself this year? Perhaps it's getting more sunshine, getting in more steps, finally taking that online dance class, or just looking good while doing it all. Macy's has everything you need to crush your 2022 health goals. Visit Macy's.com for active gear, sneakers, Fitbits, and workout equipment that makes setting and sticking to your intentions easy. But don't forget that a part of good health is also good sleep. So while you're at it, grab some new sheets and pillows for your bed to help with getting a good night's rest. And since the new year is all about making time for yourself, you can avoid wasting even a moment when you pick up your online order in-store or curbside. Or get same-day delivery powered by DoorDash. So go ahead, take over 2022 at Macy's.com. Did you know with QuickView at home over-the-counter COVID-19 tests, you can get rapid results in just 10 minutes in the privacy of your home? You can pick one up over-the-counter at your local retailer or online. 
and testing is easy. As we're preparing to gather with friends and family over the next few weeks, taking the necessary precautions to stay healthy is really important. With at-home tests, you can get your results faster and you don't even have to get out of your pajamas. If you can, it's probably a good idea to keep a few on hand. Whether you're feeling under the weather, seeing a loved one, returning from a trip, or just want to check your COVID-19 status, it's always a good idea to test with QuickView at home over-the-counter COVID-19 test. Take 10 minutes, take charge. Visit quickviewathome.com for FDA emergency use authorization only. I used to think my skin goals were unattainable because there are so many products and it's often overwhelming to know where to start. But thankfully, I found Curology. Curology will customize a prescription formula with three active ingredients picked for you to tackle your skincare needs. The formula that was customized for me is to help minimize fine lines and dark spots. To get your treatment plan, you start by answering questions online and then sending in a couple of selfies. Next, they match you with a licensed dermatology provider who gets to know your skin. And if it's a good fit, you'll get a customized prescription cream to address your unique skin concerns. Then Curology sets you up with a personalized treatment plan and ships your custom formula right to your door. I've been using the formula for almost a year now and have definitely noticed fewer lines and very few breakouts. I love that the products aren't complicated and there's no strong smell, which is my preference. Take control of acne, dark spots, breakouts, or whatever your unique concerns may be with the powerful skincare treatment made for you today. Go to Curology.com slash TBG for a free 30-day trial. Just pay for shipping and handling. That's C-U-R-O-L-O-G-Y dot com slash TBG to unlock your free 30-day trial. See Curology.com for all the details. You've already mentioned using Pinterest, like you use that as a part of your class. Mm -hmm. Are there other things that you would suggest for people who maybe can't afford a personal stylist but want to like try to put their style identity together? Are there other things besides Pinterest that you would encourage them to use? Instagram, magazines, for sure. There's a lot of research online. You just have to like sit and actually do it. But I would say like sit and take some screen grabs, like screenshot or put into a folder on Instagram, like stylish women or people who you feel like have style to you and look at what you're attracted to. See if there's a common theme and start to go from there and then say like, what am I attracted to? What am I willing to try and buy? And I always say, buy it. That's what return policies are for. And so buy it, try it on, go with the rule of three, see if you can make three outfits with it. If you cannot make three outfits, do not keep it because it's not going to do your wardrobe any justice. Mm. So you bring up a really important point around like buying stuff online, right? Mm -hmm. And so what kinds of things should we be on the lookout for to determine quality and making sure we're getting the most out of what we purchase online? Yeah, this is really good. Okay. So I would say buying online is one of the toughest things because they can do a lot of work with like color. They can make things lighter. They can make things darker. So that's like a big frustration. So that you can usually get around. A lot of retailers are starting to use video. So click video, like see what the video says. Look at those reviews. What are the people saying? Are they putting up photos? What have they said? If they say it runs too small, know that you need to size up. If they say it runs too big, know that you need to size down. I literally read the reviews for everything that I I can so that I know for a client or for myself like how to proceed or not proceed like literally reviews can make or break if I purchase something or not so read those reviews look at the videos also when it comes to like leathers online if you're trying to buy leather like if it's too shiny it probably is cheap if you're getting like this really really high shine I would say no that's probably not the best like polyurethane which is pleather to go with get something that feels more reflective to actual leather unless it's supposed to be like a vinyl leather so yeah I probably would say like those are like my key things look at the reviews look at the videos look at the comments and then leather watch that shine on leather because it could either look expensive or very inexpensive got it Mm -hmm. and you alluded to this a little earlier in talking about like things that we find ourselves maybe wearing more often it may be Mm -hmm. okay to splurge on Mm -hmm. Um, but do you have other tips around like what kinds of things we should splurge on and what kinds of things we might be 
able to buy at a discount or even secondhand? Yeah. So I would say the things that you need as far as your staples, splurge on those. I'll use myself as an example. I wear a lot of denim. I'm willing to splurge on my denim. I also now wear a lot of sweatpants. So I've started actually investing in my sweatpants because the last thing I want to do is like, okay, if I'm going to buy them for $10 today in four months, two months, after a couple washes, I don't want to keep buying it over and over. So think about the things that you're wearing constantly that you don't want to keep cycling over and over again. Like just take the investment now. Trust me, you'll thank me later because (laughs) (laughs) you're not going to have to buy it every two to six months or every year because you made the investment today. I also love great quality blazers because I love a good blazer. I feel like you can dress up or down an outfit. Also a little black dress. Every woman should have a little black dress in her wardrobe. So make an investment in a nice black dress. It doesn't have to be over $100. Just make sure it's a nice quality. But you can splurge on that. Also splurge on a great pair of shoes. A great pair of shoes can take you a long way. Whether it's a sneaker, whether it's a pump, make sure you have either a white sneaker or a black or brown pump or ankle strap sandal. And also I'll do black, nude, or metallic because I feel like metallics are so underrated and they can really level up a simple outfit. Splurge in your basics. You're going to be wearing t-shirts all the time or maybe you're wearing an underpinning like a cami all the time. So splurge on those. And when I say splurge, you don't necessarily have to spend hundreds of dollars. Just make sure it's nice quality. Handbags, We are all grown Mm. now. So I would say either like a nice like black or brown handbag can take you far. And they always make me feel grown. Like it always makes me feel like I can go close a a deal in my Gucci (laughs) bag, you know. (laughs) And I splurge on my Gucci bag because I'm like, my name is Germany Gerald. I got two G's in my name. I I mean, Gucci, duh. So (laughs) this this is for me. It's for me. And I can pass it off to my daughter. But yeah, so like get you a nice handbag. And I always say you don't even have to go to the Gucci store or the Louis store to buy a handbag. When I bought my handbag, I bought it from The Real Real or Fashion File, and they're usually very gently used, so you don't even have to spend like the huge price for it. You can get it at a fraction of the cost, still get that nice luxury feel. Got it. Yeah. And I'm wondering, Germany, if you could talk a little bit about like how you've seen your clients' lives impacted by really developing their personal style. Can you say something about that? Yeah. So I've grown with a lot of my clients, and so I'll use Valicia as an example. So Valicia Butterfield-Jones, she is now the co-president of the Grammys. And so we've taken time to really develop and hone in her style. And like, while it's still a a representation of where she is today, it's kind of like up-leveled. And I say us working on her brand through style, she was at Google and now she's the co-president of the Recording Academy, like sick. And I think even working with Bozema St. John, working with her on her style, it literally, I think it helps double down on your impact because people are really like, taking you serious and so every role (laughs) that Bose has had has been like a dynamic role but uh, she's now the chief marketing officer at Netflix and I Mm -hmm. think there's a lot to be said about that I've also had clients who I've met with at the beginning of their careers and now they're CEOs of companies or you know They've been able to garner like brand deals, et cetera, et cetera, with how they look and how they've shown up. Because when you look good, you feel good, you show up as your best selves and people want to take you more seriously because people are like, oh, like they look great. So I'm willing to actually listen and hear what they have to say. And so I've seen people either secure brand deals, secure these new roles within their career and just develop because of the style and I play a small part like all of my clients are very talented individuals and also like even Danielle Leslie we've been working together from the beginning when like she was not a millionaire now she's a millionaire and I've worked with her on every single campaign that she's run and so I just keep seeing her go higher and higher and like I said it's because people are willing to take you more seriously because you feel confident, you look confident, and they're willing to say like, oh, what do they have to say? I'm willing to hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. Thank you for that. Of course. So what are some of the Black-owned fashion brands that you are loving that we should have our eyes open for? Okay. So when it comes to accessories, I love Choked. They have really great earrings. Oma the Label, like if you're not into overt statement pieces, they have really great basic jewelry. So very, very fine and nice necklaces and rings and earrings that are at a pretty affordable 
affordable price. I don't think anything is over $200 there. TCB Accessories Atlanta, they have really great statement earrings as well. So that's the accessories department. When it comes to style or just like clothing, BBX Brand is one of my new favorite places. They are based out of the UK, but they have really dope sweatpants. I mean, then also like blazers and dresses and they do a drop like every two months. So literally like you have to be on it, on it. Hanifa, Hanifa's dope. Andrea Iyama, the brand label, they're based out of DC. They're really dope. So yeah, those are a few of my faves. Yeah, that's a great place to start. Again, going back to Instagram, right? Like I feel like that's where we're able to find like a lot of these brands now that we wouldn't know about otherwise. Exactly. I think social media has truly helped widen our reach and knowing and providing us access to black owned brands and just being able to find them out because I feel like before IG, we didn't really know or we didn't have that representation in stores before social media. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so one more game for you before we wrap up our conversation. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a speed game. I'm going to call out a couple of fashion items and you tell me whether it's a yes or a hot miss. Okay. All right. So the first one is Crocs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a fence with this. I'm gonna say yes if it has a little like pins on it. Ah, okay. So yeah. the, the accessories are the really accessories is what take it over the top. Yes. Okay. All right. What about corset tops? Oh my god, I love corset tops. Yes. Yes. Okay. And what about color clashing? Oh, I love color blocking. So absolute yes. But you have to do it in the right way that feels good to you, and like make sure you're looking at the color wheel to know like what colors go with what. Like which colors are okay. complementary and which ones mesh together. And so thinking about all of the things that you've talked about in terms of the staples of our wardrobe, what kinds of pieces do you feel like are timeless? Gosh, timeless pieces. A black dress is always going to be timeless. A blazer, jeans are always timeless. Leather pants or a leather jacket, a denim jacket, a bomber jacket. I think like third pieces. And when I say third pieces, I mean like jackets, coats. They're usually mm. always very timeless. Got it. What else is timeless? Are those super unique pieces within your wardrobe? So even mm. if you don't wear them like for a couple of years, I would say like shoes. I have a lot of statement shoes that I have just on hand. And like I might not wear them in one season. In another season, I'm like, oh my God, this is super dope. I'm going to wear this with this outfit. It's going to edge it up a bit. And so I would yeah. say anything that's super like edgy over the top is truly sometimes timeless. Just make sure it's still in your style identity. So there's that on that. Got it. So this episode is a part of our January Jumpstart series. Mm -hmm. What words of encouragement do you have for our community who's listening, who want to revamp their wardrobe or define their personal style in 2022? Yeah. So words of encouragement, be patient with yourself. Like I said earlier, it's not going to happen overnight. Think about those things that make you feel confident and make you want to show up as the best version of yourself. Adopt those things into your wardrobe. And then also like date yourself. Think about what you're really attracted to and then play for it with those things. So be patient. Think about what you're attracted to. Date yourself. And that's all I got. Yep. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I appreciate those two bits. Yes. <laughs> so where can we find you, Germany? What is yeah. your website as well as any social media handles you'd like to share? Yeah, my website is www.ggandcostyling.com. And then my Instagram is Germany, G-E-R-M-A-N-E-E -E underscore G. And I believe that is the same on Twitter as well but I'm usually more on IG than I am on Twitter. And so those are the key places you can find me. And you can also find me on LinkedIn at my full name, Germany Gerald. Yeah, those are the big places you can find me. And are you going to be doing your class anytime soon? January is usually award season and then people are rethinking about their wardrobes. So we're probably mm. going to either launch it in February or March. Mm -hmm. And so people can expect a Feb or March date, but I can have a sign up sheet on my website. So if you you are interested you can sign up and be the first to know when we do release perfect well thank you so much germany i really appreciate you sharing with us today of course thanks for having me again dr joy you're welcome i'm so glad germany was able to share her expertise with us today to learn more about her and her work 
Visit the show notes at therapyforblackgirls.com slash session 242. And be sure to text two of your girls this episode right now. If you're looking for a therapist in your area, be sure to check out our therapist directory at therapyforblackgirls.com slash directory. And if you want to continue digging into this topic or just be in community with other sisters, come on over and join us in the sister circle. It's our cozy corner of the internet designed just for black women. You can join us at community.therapyforblackgirls.com. Thank y'all so much for joining me again this week. I look forward to continuing this conversation with you all real soon. Take good care. Is that time of the year? The time we all get a little sick and start guessing whether our cough and runny nose is caused from allergies, a cold, the flu, or even COVID-19. Don't risk not knowing. Pick up a quick view at home OCC COVID-19 test over the counter from your local retailer. In just 10 minutes, you can get results in the privacy of your home. Take 10 minutes, take charge. Visit quickviewathome.com for FDA emergency use authorization only. Kohl's is here to help you stay active and look and feel good in the new year. Find activewear brands including Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour. Check out Flex, the sustainably made performance and comfort gear only at Kohl's. And new this month, check out Superfit Hero, plus size activewear for women in sizes large to 7XL. Plus, find makeup, skincare, hair care, and fragrances from Sephora at Kohl's. Get ready for a healthy, happy 2022 at Kohl's and at Kohl's.com. Peace to the planet. Charlemagne the God here. And you don't want to miss Hello Somebody with Senator Nina Turner on the Black Effect Podcast Network. I love Hello Somebody simply because I love Nina Turner. She's fearless. I'm Nina Turner. Hell raising humanitarian, sister in the struggle and recovering elected official. Listen to Hello Somebody every Thursday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.